After waiting for about a year, we finally have our first look at AMD's newest architecture in the form of the Radeon Vega Frontier Edition Workstation Graphics Card. Now, AMD emphasizes that this card is not for gamers and that they should instead wait for RX Vega to launch later in July. However, after waiting for what seems like an eternity, everybody is dying to know how this card performs. Now, unfortunately, if you've seen some of the other benchmarks for this card, you know it doesn't quite live up to its expectations. But it does still mark AMD's return to the high end. Unfortunately, that means lower high end, but it still does bring competition where it's needed. So today I'm going to be benchmarking this card in pro mode, game mode, and then game mode overclocked. Now all this testing was done in an air conditioned room with the PC placed very close to an AC unit to sort of provide the optimal testing conditions for both of these cards, the GTX 1080 and the Vega Frontier Edition. So as far as overclocks go, I was able to hit 2125 megahertz on the GTX 1080 and then 5508 on the memory, whereas Vega, I was able to get up to 1697 on the core, which is up from 1600 stock, and 1100 on the HBM2, which is up from 945 stock. So, with that being said, I won't keep you guys any longer, but let's look at the benchmarks. Alright, so as you guys can see from those benchmarks, Vega Frontier Edition performs almost identically to a GTX 1080 Founders Edition card when paired with an AMD Ryzen 1700X running at 4 GHz and using 32 MHz DDR4 RAM. And while the 1080 isn't a bad card by any means, so we can't necessarily say that Vega is a bad card by the same means. The problem is, the 1080 came out last year, and the TI has since replaced it as the Halo card, and even the Titan X to some degree, but that means that those cards are still uncontested when RX Vega eventually comes out. And even more so, Vega is going to be using the more expensive HBM2 compared to the cheaper G5X memory on the 1080, and I think a lot of the success from this card is going to depend on the price. Now, Vega still could be very successful if it launches at a cheap price. However, if it launches at anything more than $500, I think it's dead on arrival. We've already had the 1080 out for over a year, and I think that most people looking for a card in that performance bracket have already gone out and purchased one. I certainly did. My original plan was to wait for Vega, but after waiting and waiting and waiting, it didn't make sense to keep waiting when the 1080 was available. So I'm not sure how many of those consumers are still left. And thanks to this card's insane 300 watt TDP, I'm not even sure if miners will be looking at purchasing this card. Now I haven't tested this card in mining because I'm not into uh, mining ether or anything like that, but I am interested in testing it. So let me guys know if you are interested in that as well, and maybe I'll set that up. But Vega's biggest problem is that it's essentially a GTX 1080 that consumes twice as much power and is releasing over a year later. Now, once again, this is the Frontier Edition that AMD is saying isn't for gamers, but I don't expect 
RX Vega to perform drastically different than this. We might see a 10% performance increase or something like that because the drivers aren't finalized yet. But when you think about it, this really is Vega in its ultimate form. Now, the only difference that RX Vega most likely will have is 8 gigs of HBM2 instead of 16. And that's really unfortunate. And, but I'm glad that AMD is finally getting a high-end card out. I just don't think there's really a market for it. The superior card, even in this just brief comparison, is the GTX 1080. Now, that, if, even if we assumed that the Frontier Edition here was $500 instead of 1000 the only real benefit of this card is the 16 gigs of HBM2. It consumes way more power and generates way more heat, and it's louder. This card, even with max fan speed, was pretty bearable by my standards. This card is obnoxiously loud, and it has to do that to keep it cool. But it, it draws twice as much power as the 1080, and that's why it requires so much more cooling. I just think that Vega is too little, too late. Had this card launched a year ago with the RX 480, it would have been great. It would have been an alternative to the GTX 1080. Sure, it would have drawn more power, but AMD would have been truly competitive with the flagship card offered by the competition. And unfortunately, that is just not the case. And I hope this card, or RX Vega, does well when it inevitably releases finally, but unfortunately, I'm not sure I foresee that happening. And that's really sad. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and let me know if there's any other games or benchmarks that you want me to try out on this card. I don't intend to keep it around for too much longer. I will definitely be staying with the GTX 1080 here. Um, so thanks for watching.